what happened last night, the first thing that I did in the morning was to check that door in the basement. But unfortunately, it was padlocked to death. Kevin was definitely hiding something in there, and it was killing my curiosity. I was finally able to corner him during dinner. Are you sure that you weren't dreaming? Because that totally didn't happen. That night was really weird, so he could be right. Our conversation was cut off when Dad joined us. Son, it's time for you to take over the company. We will be holding a gala next weekend to introduce you to everyone. They're all so excited to meet you. But Dad, no buts. You're graduating in a few months, so prepare yourself. I don't want any problems. Understood? Of course my brother couldn't say no to him. He was always Dad's favorite, his golden boy, the perfect son. While me, I was just a stranger to him. If Mom was still alive, things would probably be different. Later that night, when I was about to sleep, I almost screamed when I saw Kevin leaning against my door. Uh, can I help you? What makes you feel alive, Kendra? Huh? What's with you? Why are you being so weird? The less you know, the better. Good night, Peanut. Peanut? Where did that come from? That was the weirdest and longest interaction we've ever had. He was a year older than me, and we had never been close growing up. His time was spent in his room reading, in the piano corner perfecting his sonatas, or with Dad talking about business while playing chess. We also didn't see each other often at school because he was always with his best friend Cedric or surrounded by their crazy fangirls. The next morning, I woke up to Dad screaming from the library. I dashed to check what it was and found out that one of our maids found a letter under Kevin's pillow. I read it and froze. Kevin left. He didn't say where he went and when he was coming back. All the note said was, do not wait for him. I would expect something like this from you, but not my son. Kevin is a responsible young man. Well, the note says otherwise. The gala is this weekend. I need your brother to be there no matter what it takes. We tried looking for Kevin everywhere, but no one knew where he was. Even the police couldn't find him, and it was driving Dad crazy. One night, he just walked up to me and started inspecting my face. You would do. You were going to be him. Be him. In case your brother is still on this stupid little adventure on the night of the gala, you will pretend to be him. But Dad, I don't think I can... Kendra, you are a capable young lady. Of course you can. You'll be saving our company from humiliation. I know I have not been very vocal about your accomplishments, but I do notice. Will you do this for me, sweetheart? I had never heard Dad talk to me that way, and it felt really good. So I found myself giving in. Besides, it would only be for just one night, right? I just needed to hide my hair under a wig and dress up like Kevin and just smile and avoid conversation as much as possible. Simple. When the big day finally came, I was a nervous wreck. There were too many important people, and Dad kept reminding me not to mess up. Luckily, the party was a success, and I thought my little mission was finally over until Dad came up to me. You did well. Now we just have to make sure that your brother will not fail his classes so he could graduate. You'll need to attend school as him. But how about me as Kendra and my grades? I'll call the school and tell them that I sent you out of the country for an emergency. Anything you fail, you can take for a summer class. But no but. This was already decided. And remember, no one should ever know about this. But Kevin and I were just too different. After carefully thinking about it, I finally decided to do it. It was my chance to impress Dad. I just needed to do one little thing, which was to learn everything about my brother to make it believable. I checked his room, but I didn't find anything useful. I had to ask for help from the person closest to him, Cedric. But there was one problem. At school or whenever he visited my brother, I would usually lock myself in my room because every time our eyes met, I felt like passing out. The guy looked like a demigod, and I just couldn't handle him. But this time, I had no choice, and I knew exactly where to find him at school, the music room. As I peeked into the room, I saw him playing the violin, and I was instantly mesmerized. Just then, he stopped playing and smiled at me. Just avoid his eyes, and you'll be fine. Did it tickle your soul? Huh? The rhythm, the passion, the climax. Sorry, but I'm not into music. I stepped back and he started walking towards this. Did it tickle your soul? I suddenly became mute. This is the first time you talked to me, and I'm surprised. What brings you here, Cupcake? Cupcake?
I got a grip of myself and slapped his hand away. First of all, I'm not food. And second, I'm not here to talk about souls and music with you. It's about my brother. Suddenly, his face turned serious. I had already talked to your dad about it. Kevin ran away and he didn't want us to find him and there's nothing we can do about it. I know, but I need your help with something. I told him about dad's demands and he suddenly laughed. <laughs> That's a ridiculous idea. You two look similar, yeah, but you're too cute and girly to be a boy. Wait, he, he found me cute? I excused myself to the bathroom and after calming down, he was nowhere to be found. It took me a whole day to finally find him playing violin in the school garden. So, are you going to help me with this or are you just going to play your violin all day? I only help people who can look me in the eye. Ugh, why was he being like this? I gathered up all my courage before finally meeting his eyes. And thankfully, I was able to control myself until he smiled. You have the same eyes as your brother. They're very pretty. So he liked my brother's eyes? That was fruity. Whatever. Now, where do we start? Your appearance. And I think it needs a lot of work. For the makeover, he brought me to the mall to cut my hair short. And it took me several hours to finally say goodbye to my precious long hair. After accepting the fate of my hair, we tried on some clothes similar to Kevin's fashion. As I walked out in a leather jacket, he came up to me to zip it up. He was so close, I could hardly breathe. Looks perfect now. He then taught me about my brother's stance, walk, and gestures. I told you to walk faster, not like a gangster. And stick out your chest more. Think of yourself as the hunkiest man alive. Like this? He held my hips to guide me, and I felt like exploding from the sparks. Just then, I noticed some girls around drooling over us. Both guys are so cute. I'll take either of them. They look so in love. OMG. Love wins. Great. And now we were a gay couple. Cedric coached me about Kevin's interests, and I was surprised. I didn't know my brother was such a dork. He loves SpongeBob so much, he even into the ocean just to look for its real-life version. But one revelation made me tear up a bit, and he adores you so much. But he thought you didn't like him, so he always chose to give you space. What? That's not true. He's too protective of you. He even told me not to talk to you because he thought I'm trouble. Oh, yes, you're definitely going to be trouble to my heart. That weekend, we continued practicing until I looked convincing enough. And when we finally got to school, I just stayed close to him and smiled at people from time to time. I was doing an excellent job at being my brother until it was lunchtime. We sat at their usual table for lunch when suddenly someone sat on my lap and kissed my cheek. It was Lauren, the prettiest and coolest chick at school. What in the frickin' pregnant duck is happening? What? You hate my kisses now? You look like you've seen a ghost. I turned into the ripest tomato when she giggled into my ear. I... I could never hate such a goddess like you. <laughs> wow. Since when did you become this cheesy? I gave Cedric a panicked look, but the jerk was trying his best not to burst out laughing. I kicked his leg under the table and his wince was satisfying. I then excused myself in the bathroom and dragged him with me. There, he revealed that Kevin had been dating Lauren for a while now, and I had no idea about it. Lauren had been all over me for the next several days. This was totally normal, of course, except for the little detail that I was not her actual boyfriend. And through all of this, Cedric remained an unhelpful idiot who was clearly enjoying my discomfort. We were walking to our last class when someone suddenly grabbed and pushed me against the wall. You're acting weird lately, and I like it. Before she could kiss me, I acted like there was a bug inside my shirt and ran away. I needed to talk to Cedric. As usual, I found him in the music room. We need to tell Lauren. Suddenly, Lauren appeared from behind me. Tell me what? Wait a minute. Don't tell me that you guys are dating. What? Cedric finally stopped playing the violin and grinned at me. I'm straight, but I don't know about your boyfriend. Aw, baby. You know I would accept you however you identify, right? W well, that, that's good to hear. Lauren looked like she bought it, and I just found myself exploding. Evan, I'm not your boyfriend. I'm his sister Kendra pretending to be him. I then explained everything to her. Oh, okay. Explains why you look and act differently. That's it? No violent reaction whatsoever? I'm used to Kevin's quirks. So, anything I can do to help with this mission? Just don't tell anyone about this. Got it, baby. Despite knowing the truth, she still kissed me on the cheek and it made Cedric laugh. 
I started hanging out with both of them since then. They would talk fondly about my brother and share things about him that I didn't know. It made me realize that he wasn't as boring as I thought he was. One day, Cedric dragged me to the music room and asked me to listen to his new composition. It was a wrong move to come with him, because the way his fingers moved and his handsome face played with the painfully sweet tune screamed danger to my heart. I calmed myself down and hyped him up when he was done. You really like playing the violin, don't you? I like to touch people's hearts with classical music. How about you? What makes you happy, Kendra? I'm curious. I ended up telling him about my passion, which was fashion designing. I used to draw my designs every day, but when Dad saw it, he burned all of them. He found it lame and useless to his company. I'm sorry to say this, but your dad is the biggest jerk in the world. He treats you and Kevin as assets to his company, and never as a son and daughter. You're right, but it just made me crave for his love and approval. Someday, I hope you'll be able to find the courage to do what you need to do. You have me now, you know. I'll take care of you. He leaned in closer, and I thought he was going to kiss me. But to my surprise, he pulled away and walked back to the platform to play again. What was that all about? After the incident in the music room, I started thinking that maybe Cedric liked me too. Until one day, I heard him talking to Lauren in an empty classroom. You like Kendra, don't you? What are you talking about? She's off limits. And besides, she's just like the little sister I never had. Those words were enough for me to accept the truth that Cedric will just be my dream. To distract myself, I invited Lauren for a sleepover. And as she was trying on some of my favorite clothes, I couldn't help but admire how beautiful she was. Just then, I found her smirking at me through the mirror. <laughs> Are you falling in love with me now? No, I'm just... I wish I was as pretty as you. Oh, honey, you are prettier than me. And not to mention cute, she ended up knocking on my drawers, spilling some things. There was one thing that suddenly caught my attention. A peanut. What was it doing there? Suddenly, I remembered Kevin calling me a peanut before he ran away. Why don't we crack it open? Maybe he left a secret message or something. And he actually did. I'm finally alive. Wait a minute. That night before he left, he asked me what makes me feel alive. Lauren and I then came up with a mission to find the answer to that question. Your brother is too mysterious sometimes. Maybe Cedric knows something. But unfortunately, he was useless. One day, Dad suddenly called me and started asking about Lauren. I learned that she's dating your brother. Her parents and I are talking about a very important business deal. We will have dinner with them tomorrow night. Make sure to be extra attentive to her. I thought it wouldn't be much of a problem until they suddenly decided to marry us off with Dad knowing that I was Kendra. He was crazier than I thought. Do you think Kevin will be home by then? I don't know if he's ever coming back. I can't believe you dated an idiot. Watch your words, honey. That's my idiot. Well, we need to find your idiot ASAP. The next day, we met up with Cedric in a cafe to talk about finding my brother. We don't even know what makes him feel alive. Shouldn't we just wait for him to come back? Our parents are talking about marriage for Pete's sake. We're running out of time. Do you know what my parents would do if they found out they were being played? Out of panic, I remembered something again. The mysterious door in the basement. I told them about it, and we waited for Dad to be out before destroying the padlocked door, only to find out that it was actually a dark room where Kevin developed all his photographs, and it was connected to his room. And all those pictures were related to an island that only meant one thing. Kevin was staying on one of them. It makes sense now that he always disappears on weekends. I also found a camera in his bag one time, but I never saw it again. And why didn't you both tell me about this earlier? You're both idiots. And with that, the three of us were off to an adventure to get my brother back. As we traveled, I kept on flirting with Lauren to avoid Cedric. And for a moment, I thought I saw his deadly blue mirror. Was he jealous? I wished. In a span of two days, we had already visited seven islands, but there was no luck. Just when we were about to give up, we suddenly spotted someone resting on a hammock. It was Kevin. He looked shocked to see us. Suddenly, he glared at Cedric. Dude, you told them? Wait, you knew? Uh, let me explain. No, you knew. And you kept silent while I was going crazy trying to find a way to bring back my brother so I could get me back. Kendra was equally furious. Babe, I can explain. She said it, Kevin. You're not my favorite person right now. Kendra. Later, I need to speak to my brother. I walked away and Kevin followed me. Now start explaining the reason I'm sacrificing my identity. 
I'm sorry, Peanut. I didn't mean for you to be tangled up in my mess. I felt stuck and suffocated because of Dad's expectations. I always knew I would have to take over the company someday, but I didn't know it would be this soon. I thought I would have enough time to still do what I love, to enjoy every island and see its beauty through my lens. But suddenly, I didn't even have a year. So I panicked and I ran away. I'm such a coward. It didn't take a second for me to melt. No, that's the bravest thing I've seen you do. All our lives, I've only ever seen you nod to Dad's every demand. I'm proud of this version of you. I convinced him to come back, but he ended up convincing me to ditch Dad and come with him. After everything that happened, I just realized one thing. Dad wasn't worth it. So I agreed. Lauren is amazing, you know. She didn't deserve to be left without a word. I know, Peanut. I guess I have a lot of making up to do. Good luck, Walnut. Later that day, he spent his time making it up to Lauren and talking to Cedric, while I was left alone doodling some cute dresses on the sand. My brother then came up to me and asked me something. Are you mad at Cedric? I asked him not to tell anyone. Keeping this from you must have been very hard for him. I understand, but you like him, don't you? What? No, I mean, don't worry. I finally gave him the go signal. You two can kiss or whatever. As soon as he left, Cedric walked up to me with an earth-shattering smile. Can we talk? I couldn't look at him in the eye again. Uh, about? About us. I've always fancied you, you know, more than violins. I felt like melting at his confession. I told him about the reason why I'd been avoiding him all these years, and he responded to it by finally kissing me on the lips. Thank God I didn't pass out. So, did it tickle your soul this time? <laughs> yes. Finally. <laughs>